Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Scott Linderham, and I'm a Vice President with Red Cloud Securities here in Toronto. Uh, we're hosting a webinar today featuring uh, Quebec Precious Metals. Um, Quebec Precious Metals is a gold exploration company focusing on gold exploration in the underdeveloped James Bay region of Quebec. Um, it is backed by uh, the largest mining, gold mining company in the world, Newmont Corporation, and with the support of Newmont, uh, and leading financial institutions in Quebec, such as the Caisse de Dépôt et Placement. Uh, Quebec Precious Metals is rapidly advancing its flagship Sakami Gold project uh, to what could potentially be a multi-million ounce deposit and the first multi-million ounce deposit uh, in several years in Northern Quebec. Um, and so we'll kick that off very shortly. The presentation will feature Norman Champagny, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Quebec Precious Metals and also Jean-Francois Mayeu, the president of Quebec Precious Metals. Uh, the format will be as such. Uh, I will kick the presentation to, off to Jean-Francois, who will provide an overview of Quebec Precious Metals and take us through the first section of the presentation, uh, followed by Norman, who will provide a more detailed overview of the Sakami project, and we'll get into more uh, aspects of the geology, and the project potential, and what Quebec Precious Metals is looking to achieve uh, in the region. Um, to start off, we will have to go through some disclosures, um, and let's just get those out of the way. Uh, for Quebec Precious Metals, there will be looking statements made on this call. I would direct every listener to the cautionary note located on page two of Quebec Precious Metals corporate presentation, uh, located, and it, which is also located on the company's website. Uh, for Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we would also note that this call does not take into account the particular situation, needs, or circumstances of individual investors. Uh, participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing in this or any other security. Uh, I would also direct everyone participating in today's webinar to our most recent re research on the Red Cloud Financial Services website, www.redcloudfs.com. Uh, located, which will show the Quebec Precious Metals most recent research and any company specific disclosure. With that, Jean Francois, I will turn the presentation over to you for an overview of Quebec Precious Metals. And then I'd ask that uh, you would turn the presentation to Ramon following your section to provide an overview and a more detailed discussion on uh, the Sakami Gold Project in James Bay. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Yes, uh, good afternoon or good morning if you're on the West Coast. So I'm Jean-Francois Meillard, president of Quebec Precious Metals, and I will run you to the corporate and design of the company. And Norman will walk you towards the more technical stuff. So we created the company in 2018 uh, to create a major new gold company with a, a large land package of greenstone belt over 1,100 square kilometers of land that we own in the James Bay, all into greenstone belts. Since the creation of the company, we've raised uh, 12.4 million. We're strategically backed by Newmont and also the Quebec Pension Fund, La Caisse de Dépôt et Placement du Québec. And um, we are, our flagship project is Sakami. This is our share uh, corporate information. So we're, we had a bit of a uh, bump in the share since uh, the mid-April date. We're trading around 30 cents right now for a market cap of about 20 million. A payment of 1.2 million that could be added this year uh, to our treasury through the closing of that sale. Um, what is interesting is between Newmont, Quebec institutions, the volume increased in our shares, probably related to a couple of things, price of gold and interest in gold trickling to the juniors and also our new discovery that just uh, was announced in the middle of April. Our land package is all continuous to uh, the roads and infrastructures power the company is if you look south, you have the Abitibi camp, which has 
a lot of potential. I'll introduce myself. Uh, my background is finance. I've been structuring and helping small companies in the capital market for over 15 years now. Funded mo uh, a lot of them in the resource and non-resource space. And uh, I'm a large shareholder of the company. Um, maybe not my, if you could maybe introduce yourself uh, just for a quick moment. Thank you, Jean-Francois, geological engineer based in Quebec, all my career in mining in Canada and internationally, many years with Price Waterhouse Cooper's mining practice. And the last 16 years, uh, been involved largely with junior mining, principally in Quebec. Recently, uh, Tony Brisson uh, came in to support our geological team. Uh, he was 25, uh, he is 25 years of experience, but he was the exploration manager at Eleonore. Sorry for, for that. I don't know. And Jean-Sébastien Lavallée, which is our VP of exploration, um, worked on the, our flagship project in early in the year 2000. He had that prospect in his head for 10, 13 years. And he came to us uh, in 2012, knowing that he had a great opportunity of acquiring a flagship asset that could deliver a multi-million ounce potential. His thesis was confirmed with drilling, and I think he can claim the discovery of the La Pointe deposit. Uh, we have a very strong independent board with John Hick, which is a veteran in the mind us on the technical committees, as also Dominique Dion, she's, uh, she was VP Corporate Affairs at x at Glencore, and uh, she helps Norma and ourselves to, uh, to maintain communication with First Nation and the communities. Charles Maines was the ex-CFO of Yamana up to recently, so we have a, a very good board of people to work with us. Our plan this year is to drill 25,000 meters uh, off our Sakami project to prepare a first resource estimate. Our goal is to disclose a resource that would be above 2 million ounce for the reasons that we want to build critical mass because we're in James Bay. We're not right in the mining camp of Valdor. We believe that you need to, to build size before you get valued to the ounces you, you bring. So 2 million ounces is a threshold we set ourselves. I think we're well on the way with the new discovery that increases the chance of success for this year. We have a total of about 18 different properties in our portfolio, which most of them are non-core, even outside James Bay. So we have a plan to monetize those assets, either by the way of outright sales for cash or shares or JVs, and uh, we have announced a few of those in the last year, and we're gonna continue funding the company uh, with those transactions, probably partially fund the company with those, action, with those actions. Uh, one of the project we have is a rare earth project, which is called Kipawa. That project carried expenses or exploration budget for about $35 million over the years by uh, Matamec Exploration, which we merged with. So we own that project for 68%. Our partner is Investissement Quebec. They own 32%. We're looking to monetize as well that asset. It has a feasibility, a resource, and we believe that could bring a, a decent amount of money and reduce dilution for shareholders. We're also looking at different opportunities in the market. If we can buy accretive ounces, that would bring more value to the shareholder because the management doesn't have any bandwidth for money and we know we can raise money to advance an asset. So that's something we always keep our eyes on. But right now the focus is Sakami, where we're active. When we talked about the geological opportunity of James Bay, so on the left, you have the ABCB Greenstone Belt, and the blue dots are drill holes for exploration. On the right, you have the same type of rock, Greenstone Belts, which are very prospective for gold deposits, and you have the blue dots again for drill holes. In ABCB, you have close to 40,000 exploration drill holes monitored by the Quebec database. 
On the right side, you have less than 2,000 drill holes for exploration. So this camp of James Bay is massively under explored. You have infrastructure and you can explore at a very decent price. And we own uh, a district scale opportunity there. To enhance that opportunity, what is well known in Val d'Or is you have the Cadillac break. Well, you have the same geological setting with the James Bay Fault. It's the contact between sedimentary basin of Opinaca and you have the volcanic rocks of La Grande that are making a massive fracture and you can see it in purple on the screen. Our land package follows that fault in the greenstone belt for close than 100 kilometers across our land package. So that enhances even further uh, the chances of success of finding a major deposit. This is just to show the camp potential compared to other Ontario mining districts or, um, or Quebec. And you can see that James Bay can definitely grow in size in terms of its geology. We're right now just at the beginning. Infrastructures of Sakami, you can see in pale sand, the road, the James Bay Road right west, going north to south is a paved road. And we can take our uh, dirt road to go right onto the La Pointe Prospect even, in, and even further to the Simon showing and the JR showing, which is north of the project. You can see as well, three power lines running parallel to the project. So we have access within 15 kilometers to power. This is a high resolution mag uh, that shows the potential of the fault on the, pro uh, on the project Sakami. The fault is continuous to the project for 23 kilometers, which if you picture, is about the same size that the Valdor camp from uh, Valdor to Malartic is. And from Valdor to Malartic, you have about 13 mines right now in operation or in development, and it's producing, for some cases, 100,000 to half a million ounce a year. So Sakami itself is like a mining camp. And you can see all the white stars on this slide are gold showings. And you ha we have above 13 kilometers of gold showing anomalies that hasn't been tested. The red square right in the middle showing the La Pointe deposit and the La Pointe extra, uh, extension is the main focus of the company. That's a target which is mostly advanced. That's a target that Normand will show you in details. This is a target that we can proudly say that with surface sampling, with IP and soil geochemistry, we can highly uh, successfully target new gold drilling and put good, very good results. So maybe Norman from here, take the people to uh, the more technical aspect and the perspective uh, aspect of the company. Thanks. Thank you, Jean-Francois. Good afternoon, everyone. Before we get into the more technical details of the project, I just want to mention also the relationship with the Cree Nation in the area. Uh, the Cree Nation has signed three agreements with the province of Quebec over the years, going back to the 70s and one earlier this year to foster economic development. Uh, they have been very supportive. They are one of the main beneficiaries of the Eleanor Gold Mine. We have engaged with them from the trap line owner in the project area all the way to the people at the closest community, which is the women G community. We intend to hold our next annual meeting uh, of shareholders at women G uh, who have used the services of uh, their uh, service company uh, for doing snow removal. And uh, we intend to have them more involved with the drilling and also with the project development. Oh, something went wrong with the slides. I'm gonna go back Jean-Francois here. So, so as Jean-Francois mentioned, uh, this is a surface discovery. 
so far at the La Pointe deposit where we've done most of the drilling. We have a 900 meter strike, 600 meters at depth. Uh, we have uh, an extension, which was recently announced, which extends La Pointe uh, over about three kilometers. We can work all year round. We have two drills on site. We're ready to start again. And the timing of this webinar is good because earlier today we heard that uh, mineral exploration activities in Quebec uh, can restart officially uh, on May 11th when we've been uh, doing a lot of detailed planning to restart in June. Uh, we had planned to break because of the breakup in, uh, in April and also in May in James Bay, there's a few weeks that uh, you're, you cannot fly in a helicopter uh, and it's encouraged not to do too much exploration because of the migration of the geese. So we are planning to go back to the field, do a bit of surface work, and start drilling again to extend uh, the extension, test other targets at La Pointe, and also uh, the other target areas that uh, Jean-Francois illustrated on the previous slide. So we have 23 kilometers along the contact uh, between La, La Grande and La Pinaca. And as mentioned earlier, the infrastructure is good. It's remote, but the infrastructure is good. So if you look at La Pointe uh, in more detail, you're seeing here the uh, representation of the surface drilling, the drill hole colors, the zone in green, mineralized zone is shown in uh, green, pale green. And you have two open arrows that shows the extension. We have, to, we have now confirmed with uh, not only surface work, but also the drill results that we've announced in April. So there's ample room to uh, develop uh, our deposit and to reach our goal. Our goal is to have 2 million ounces of resources. And with the current drilling, we believe we can get there. We're gonna look now at the vertical section on uh, the next slide. The section is uh, taken north to south. Again, in green, we're saying the mineralized zone. We have intersected uh, the zone in 106 drill holes to date. Uh, and uh, we're gonna continue to extend it, uh, as I mentioned, a long strike. The uh, significant goal grades have been uh, listed here that we have so far over width uh, of 20 to 80 meters, including the recent intercept about two kilometers from La Pointe deposit at uh, 1.5, sorry, 1.15 grams gold over 80.1 meters. If you look at that in a bit more detail, you can see where we've been drilling historically and see what the extension is to the Southwest, where we have three holes that have been reported. The rest of the samples are in the lab we expect to get the values this month. The lab has restarted servicing commercial mines here in Quebec and exploration um, sample has been processed at a slower pace, but we expect to get those values uh, later this month to be released. And that will be very helpful in the planning of uh, our drilling to follow this summer. We have a technical committee within the company and we also have a technical company, sorry, technical committee with uh, Newmont which means every quarter we had a meeting with them a few days ago to review the information, to get their input. They're very supportive. They're very excited about what we're doing. And obviously they want us to find the next coal mine in the James Bay region. On the next slide, you're seeing the same signature, if you wish, but this time in the geochemical samples, soil geochemical samples have been taken, analyzed for gold and arsenic. Arsenic is a good pathfinder element. Uh, the pathfinder element uh, allows us to delineate the areas of interest, and this matches uh, what we've seen in rock samples, also matches what we've seen in the geophysical surveys. We're gonna look at that in a second. But you can see this well-defined trend, uh, again, uh, leaves us ample room, ample areas to uh, expand the deposit and confirm a very significant mineralized system. So this is uh, the IP survey results that we had so far. There have been a number of results historically. Uh, we're gonna expand that and that is shown with a gray outline. The gray outline of uh, the proposed survey. We've appointed a contractor. We plan to do that in June. And we believe that this IP survey will allow us to extend existing IP anomalies, particularly to the Southwest and further 
help us to define the drill targets to do the drilling between the holes that we've drilled so far and also further to the southwest. Geology uh, in the La Pointe area, and this is a map that was compiled uh, using the surface information. We have the mineralization contained in a silicified paranite, so it's a very hard rock, highly silicious, uh, which has a little bit of sulfide, pyrite, arsenopyrite, can be traced. This obviously folds, and uh, we're spending more time with a 3D model with uh, our consultant SGS to uh, better understand the folding. Uh, we have uh, traced this horizon throughout the project. We also, also have a small uh, our information, which acts as a marker horizon, which help us trace the gold mineralization. The uh, early metallurgical work or work in, on mineralogy indicates, uh, and some of that was done by Newmont, that we have free gold, fine free gold. Some of the gold grains are attached to arsenopyrite, but are not uh, encapsulated in, into arsenopyrite. Stepping back again, looking at the project, uh, we want to highlight here the favorable contact with a thick dotted line between the Opinaca and uh, the uh, Lagrange, the geological sub-provinces, which dictates where you're going to find gold. You see the showings, you see the area in the dotted red line where we've been focusing our exploration and drilling this year. Uh, Simon uh, is an area where we've done more drilling this winter. Uh, results are pending. Uh, they should come out again in May. We had some very good success uh, when we drill in 2019. Here it looks promising. It is also 9.6 GR43, which will deserve some attention. Looking at CIMO itself, in 2019, four holes were drilled. The values are there, and that includes 14 grams over two meters. So this is still very early days, but geologically speaking, very similar to what we have at the point again, along the favorable contact. And for JR, a similar situation, six hole intercepted gold mineralization. We have the R information that I mentioned earlier that we have at that point. Uh, it's open in all directions, and we've got uh, six holes that uh, have intercepted gold mineralization there. So more to come from there. And uh, to the south uh, and uh, west of the Illinois mine, uh, earlier this year, azimut exploration has announced a very good, uh, exciting drill results at their Patwin prospect on their Elmeries property. Uh, we had two projects in the area where we have done some work last year. We augmented our land position, and our land position is shown here uh, with a thick black line. And immediately following that, we found a uh, airborne survey to capture the magnetic signature. And we have appointed a team to do the surface work this summer to identify the areas best with best targets. The block of claims to the southeast, as you see here, there as not only good access, but also a number of goal showings that we know about. So uh, stay tuned for uh, more to come from that area as we uh, identify the best target areas that could be eventually drilled in this uh, emerging uh, area of the James Bay, which shows again how prolific the James Bay area is for, for gold. So why invest in QPM? We have and we will have timely exploration and drill results from our flagship Sakami project that is advancing at the mineral resource estimation stage. We have significant potential for additional discoveries uh, we have a strategic investor in the form of Newmont, also Quebec institutions. We have a good team and board. We have money, and uh, uh, we are aiming at finding the next Illinois mine in the James Bay area. Thank you for your attention. Be happy to answer questions uh, from the audience on this webinar today. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Normand, and, and thank you as well, Jean-Francois, for this great presentation. Uh, we do have a couple questions. Um, the first one is just more, I suppose, on an administrative level. Just if you could just maybe um, walk us through the the corporate GNA burn rate of the company and, and how you how sort of the what you guys do to keep that uh, keep that down and efficient, and, and maybe talk about a little bit. So uh, GNA GNA is based. Whoops, the sound is not very good, Scott. Uh, 
GNA is kept at the lowest possible level. Uh, we have a, a sublease here in Montreal for our office. We spend money in the field. We're using contractors. Uh, the uh, estimated burn rate for this year is going to be around 900,000 or so. We do some marketing, obviously. Uh, we're working with you. Uh, and we also have a tax credit. I believe Jean-Francois mentioned that. That's coming from the uh, Quebec uh, tax department to us, which is helpful when you uh, spend hard, hard dollars. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and Norman, you did touch on this a bit earlier, and I and believe Jean-Francois may have touched on it earlier as well. Um, just, if you could, just uh, take our audience through the relationship you have with the local crew around Wiminji uh, and how you see their involvement in the development of Sakami and, and how you work to maintain that relationship in a little more detail, because obviously that is something that is of paramount importance and, and it's very good to see that you guys have engaged the local communities in development of Sakami. It's very important. Uh, this is their territory. They have a semi-autonomous government. They, as I mentioned earlier, support economic development as long as it's done properly. Uh, we have an excellent relationship with the local tallyman or uh, the uh, trap line owner. But we have visited WebNG last year. We're planning to visit them again to do three things, basically. Uh, prepare for our annual meeting, which we want to hold there and take them, take some of their community representatives to the field. We want to also um, have them engage in the design of a cofer dam. We're looking at an open pit situation here, which would require a cofer dam to that because it is a reservoir. Uh, the best thing to do is to engage with Adro Quebec that manages the water levels and the best stakeholder to engage with Adro Quebec are the Crees themselves. It is their territory. So that's discussion we've had so far, we want to formalize that. We want to have them also more engaged in providing services. I mentioned snow removal earlier in the presentation. Uh, we like to have them also involved more with the drilling. Speaking of drilling, uh, obviously with the restart of exploration activities in Quebec, uh, they don't want any issues in connection with COVID. So we've designed a protocol uh, and other companies have as well. We will share that protocol with them so they feel happy that this protocol minimizes uh, risk uh, of, um, of having anyone in the area that uh, may be infected by COVID. Uh, and lastly, uh, we would like also have them as shareholders. That's a longer term effort. But these are all the initiatives that uh, we want to have uh, uh, formalized and, and move forward as we uh, work in the area. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, now, obviously, it is incredibly advantageous to have a have a partner in, in Newmont Corporation, obviously the world's largest gold mining operation, gold mining company, I should say. Um, to the extent that you can, would you would you could you characterize or just walk our audience through the relationship with Newmont and how how the two teams work together and 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 devise plans for working in the area, given that their experience with Eleanor in the region and and, and utilizing your skill sets in terms of exploration. Thank you for asking. It's a good question. Uh, before Newman was Gold Corp, and we created the company thanks to Gold Corp. They were supportive of having the transaction done. They, they became the largest shareholder. Uh, they want success. Uh, they believe that uh, companies like us can achieve that success, which is to find more resources. They like the area. They like the potential. They recognize this is a new ABTB. So the relationship with, that, with, it, with them we have is to get as much technical input that we can have uh, to uh, advance the, the projects that we have. So that's why we meet quarterly. Uh, they have people from the mine itself. They have people that are geologists that work in other parts of the world as well. So the input is excellent. Uh, they uh, also have in-house resources that we can use from time to time. They have been to the field. Uh, and uh, I would say the relationship is, is very good. Great. Excellent. I appreciate that. Uh, that is all the questions we have for the moment, Oman. Um, if I may, um, you know, in terms of the James Bay region, uh, your focus, so Sakami, you're focusing on, I guess the, the plan is to get back into the field in June. Uh, could you give the, our listeners on the webinar sort of what you'd envision as a potential timeline for, for development milestones over the course of the next maybe six to nine months? What you expect so, to achieve? We should, we, should we should announce the release of our results. Uh, pending results from the drilling during the month of May. Uh, we are planning to announce the detailed program that will follow starting in June. 
we expect to start that program early June at this stage, and then drilling to start late June, early July with results to follow uh, after that, and also the service results that we will generate. With respect to El Maris, those results also will be available uh, during the summer, and we plan to drill until the end of the year. Um, John, so maybe Norman, this question would be for you. Um, in terms of the co the expenses on the, in the field, um, what what you, what's your sort of cost per meter and uh, in, in terms of drilling its economy and how does that compare to other parts of Quebec and maybe uh, other gold exploration plays that are drilling in parts of Canada, such as Nunavut or the Yukon? How, what is your cost base for that? And, um, and so you know, all all in uh, drilling cost for the last campaign is around two hundred and thirty dollars a meter. Uh, if we drill shallow holes, which I suspect for the extension is going to be that shallow by, say, maybe 150 to 100 me 200 meters, it's going to be maybe around 200. Uh, now, with COVID, there's going to be more precautions, uh, and we've budgeted a 10% contingency uh, to allow for that, and we've talked to the companies about that as well. Uh, we're planning to relocate uh, the camp closer to the extension and and have a greater distance between the various parts of the camp. So that, that's an idea of cost. It's a very good drilling cost. For James Bay, this is a very good drilling cost because you do have to uh, bring people there to stay at the camp. So right. we're, we're, we believe we're very competitive. Okay, great, excellent, thank you. Um, and I think you, you did touch on this a bit earlier. Uh, your, your initial target, or, or I guess the, your target along with Newmont's, for size of Sakami would be how many, what, 2 million ounces or so, thereabouts? Is that yeah, we believe that, that in James Bay, that in James Bay, uh, that's what you need. The Eleanor okay. mine, when it started at 8 million ounces of reserve and resources, uh, this is what you need for a standalone operation of a syndicate size operated by a major company. Uh, we've been in agreement and we've been consistent in that. Um, if you have less than that, then it's not going to be of the size that's Consider it sufficient for a major operator to come in and start a new mine. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, maybe can can we have back the presentation? Uh, yeah, we should be able to do that for you. Yeah, maybe I'll just. I see that there's a whiteboard, and because yeah. you're asking about about size and uh, things like that, what's in interesting? On the new discovery is, uh, I missed the part that Norma was illustrating uh, the uh, all this, but I believe now this new new discovery, from a surface perspective, is as big as La Pointe, and this northern as well has a lot of prospective uh, potential for us. So knowing that there's already a, an interesting number of ounces there and we could replicate that from a perspective that we had soil geochemistry looking like La Point, we had drill holes now in, we have surface sampling in and the geology is quite equal to it. Uh, we believe this is the lead, is the let's say pathfinder for us for, to reach that 2 million ounce threshold this year and uh, we need to be successful uh, and there's a third layer to that is the IP also when you look at the IP at La Point and you look at the IP signal here well we have another layer of data that confirms the potential success of that new discovery. So we are very enthusiastic and this builds this two kilometer trend that can definitely change the scope of the project. This is all open and total it's a six kilometer belt contact that we have that we believe we can bring on the potential of the project with maybe more than 2 million ounce, but that's a threshold where we would like to disclose the first resource. 
Okay, great. Uh, Jean-François, since you've pointed to the potential scale of this uh, on the whiteboard, um, could you guys provide uh, provide uh, the audience with what you view as a potential geological analog for something of this scale, given uh, the you know given the work that you've done and what you are targeting in the region? So that's a very good question. Uh, this area, James V area, is characterized by high grade metamorphism. We're talking about upper amphibolite. Uh, and uh, it was found by following this contact fault. Many people call it a metamorphic front. And these kind of fronts are found at other, in other places in, in the world. Obviously, the Illinois mine is the analog we're working on in the area. But a very good analog in Australia is a Tropicana deposit, which is in higher grade metamorphism. And it's 8 million ounces. And it is a mine. Okay, excellent. That's, that's, that's great. Um, I, in general, I think I think that's all the that's all the questions we have for today. Um, as we wrap up, would you guys like a, an opportunity just to say a few closing remarks and uh, before we go? Jean-François. Well, thanks everyone for attending. If you have any questions, no mind myself are always available by email, by phone. Our contact are in the presentation, even on the website. So feel free to contact us, and it's been a real pleasure to. Uh, engage the conversation with you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Scott. Thank you, Retla, for organizing this in these turbulent times. It is an efficient way to have a good reach to people that are interested in what we do. Have a good afternoon. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. And thanks, everyone, who took the time to, to, to attend the webinar. Uh, just for everyone's benefit, uh, there will be a replay available for those who cannot dial in, and we'll make sure that's posted and sent out. As well, uh, we will have the presentation available on our website, www.redcloudfs.com. Uh, so just to wrap up, thank you, Norman. Thank you, Jean-Francois. We appreciate your time. And as well, everyone who's taking the time to dial in, we do appreciate it. And we hope you, uh, we, we, we hope you enjoyed the presentation and found it very informative.